everybody. <laughs> this is Lady Ty coming at you with my um, pregnancy story time. As you guys know, I did put a video up about maybe possibly vlogging um, about my pregnancy. Um, I'm sorry, about my delivery story. That didn't happen. No excuses. Pain was there. Couldn't really record at the hospital. I figured I'd just do a story time and just kind of do a quick little, you know, video. There's going to be lots of videos to come um, about different things, you guys. I hope you guys are doing great in your pregnancy or if you've already had your baby, congratulations. As you can see, I have a bassinet here, so that means my little one is here. Um, so first things first, um, as you guys know, I was going to be induced on the 12th. Um, I did get admitted to the hospital to go in and to get induced because of my um, hypertension as well as my age. I'm hoping I don't wake her up. But I went in on the 12th at 7.30 p.m. Me and my boyfriend arrived at the hospital and we were not able to get a bed. So if anybody's been induced before, you know you have to wait. Um, they may even be an hour or two because people that are actually going into labor naturally, they come as a priority. Since I technically wasn't in labor, I had a scheduled time to be there, but there were people before me arriving, so I had to wait. It was about a two and a half hour wait. So my anxiety was on edge. We kind of hung out at the hospital, went to the cafe. Um, we sat down there and talked and watched some YouTube videos and laughed. We just, you know, kind of chilled out until it was time. When it was finally time, we went back up around, I want to say it was like 9.45 or something like that. And I got in the room. They went ahead and got me in the bed. Excuse me. Cooked everything up and they started the process. The first thing they did was they did insert um, the pill into me vaginally to get the process started. Guys, I don't remember the name of all this stuff. I don't. So I'm sorry. I meant to write everything down. But they put that in you to start your softening the cervix and to help you dilate. Ultimately, your body's not really laboring because it's not ready to go into labor yet. So that starts the process. So that night, they did one pill and they also did, um, I'm getting ahead of myself. That was that night. So I had mild contractions. They checked me. I wasn't dilated. My cervix was softening a little bit going throughout the night, but not much progress. About 3 a.m., the contraction started. Um, they hurt. It's an indescribable feeling. I, I can't explain it. I, I just can't. Um, they hurt. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, like cramps my I had a lot of lower back pain abdominal cramping like bawling her heartbeat was steady through the whole process but it was just moving very slow i got a second dose um of the pill that was inserted again they checked me um they put it in there um and checked me i think every hour still no progress so i did get a balloon i believe it's called a foley balloon they inserted into you vaginally deflate it and then they expand it with saline to kind of open you up a little bit and to go ahead and initially just go ahead and start to dilate you um, so that you can contract and have, you know, an open cervix to pass the baby. That was put in, I say about two to three, probably four hours later, it did come out. They were able to remove it. So I was, op my, I was ultimately ready. My cervix was soft enough. Um, but I wasn't contracting regularly enough. I had been contracting regularly on, 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 on point. And then after a while, it just went to a standstill. And this is where it got complicated. Um, you cannot deliver a baby if you don't contract. Um, so they checked me again. They were like, oh, you were at a five. I got stuck at five centimeters, you guys. And at that point, nothing was happening. Like nothing was Nothing was happening. I wasn't dilating anymore. I was stuck at that five and my whole family was there by then. This is the next day, which is the 13th. Um, the day is going on and the contractions were coming, but they weren't as frequent. I was starving, guys, because, you know, you can't have any food. So I was just cranky, hurting, stressed, worried because I really wanted to have my baby vaginally. I knew the cesarean was going to be a possibility. So I was just stressed, like, please let me be able to push her out. Um, and that was my, my, my concern along with the pain, um, around three o'clock, 
I was in tears. I was hurting so bad. They said, well, do you want an epidural? Do, 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 do. You guys, I promise, it took me 45 minutes to an hour to decide if I wanted it and going through the pain, and I finally just said yes. Um, I felt kind of bad about it. I cried about that, too, because I didn't want to get any pain meds. Um, it makes me emotional now, because I'm like, could I have stuck it out and dealt with it? But I wasn't moving, so and the pain was just coming and coming. It, it, I went ahead and got the epidural. The epidural was not bad for me, you guys. Um, when they put it in, it hurt, and... It was very quick. Mine went right in. I didn't have any complications. Um, and it was immediate relief. So, like I said, I think that was around 3 o'clock when they put it in. Um, put it in and they started giving me medicine. They have a button where you can push to get additional medicine. I never had to push that button. Not one time. So, it was very, very manageable. My doctor was coming in and she was starting to get worried. Um, because um, she, she didn't see any progress. She said, well, we're going to pop your water. Um, so they went ahead and broke my water to try to get things going and they were going to start me on Pitocin, which they did. So I started the Pitocin after they broke my water and still nothing. Guys, the funniest part about her breaking my water was when she broke my water, I, she had to know that water was going to come out. But it was so funny because when she popped it, it kind of squirted out like the water kind of just went all i'm like why weren't you prepared with some towels or some pads or something underneath me and it kind of got on my doctor and I, I didn't want to say it was funny but i'm kind of like you know what was going to happen why come you weren't prepared so it and my family was in the room i was i mean all modesty goes out the window guys i had my sister in there my cousin and my boyfriend as well as my, i think my niece was in there but they are women. They've been through it before. And my boyfriend, he's had children before. This is the first time he's had to go through this kind of process. But I was like, thought I was going to be all shy and stuff about it. But I really just, y'all yeah, did not even care. I was just like, I was happy to have people in there supporting me. And it, that's all that mattered to me. So when she popped it, it kind of gushed out. It was gross. And I felt so gross because they were checking me so frequently, checking my service. And, you know, they use gel. And I was just like, can somebody wipe me off? Like, I just want a bath. Like, I felt so gross if you guys been there you know how it feels like it's just disgusting it's a disgusting feeling especially after they broke my water they changed my bedding but i still never felt clean after that it was horrible i was sleep deprived because i was so tired and gross feeling it was just all over the place okay broke my water gave me some pitocin nothing happened i said well can i have some more pitocin she said no she didn't want me to have any more pitocin because of running the risk of having the baby be at such a high stress level because she wasn't really ready to come she wasn't going down she wasn't moving fast enough so my doctor kind of said well i broke your water it hasn't been broke that long um but she was concerned about since it was broke about me having infection and stuff like that so um what happened after that so after after that, um, she kind of was coming visiting. She said, you're not moving. I said, I want to wait, you know, and I want to wait. So we waited some more and see if what was going to happen. Still nothing was happening. And she was like, I'm going to give you the choice. And this is where the emotions ran high, guys. She said, I'm going to give you the choice to go ahead and wait. She said, the baby's doing fine. Her heartbeat is steady. They kept flipping me because I was better off actually on my right side, not my left with her heartbeat and her oxygen levels. They did put me on oxygen because the baby was seeming like she was needing me to get a little bit more. Um, she said, I can um, wait with you, but I can't guarantee any movement. Um, Y'all see these bags? That's another video. Um, or I can go ahead and give you a C-section. And at that time, y'all, I started crying because I'm just like, what do I do? I wanted to do what was best for the baby, but I know what I wanted. I didn't want to be selfish. And if I waited, something happened. Um, a cesarean is a big deal, guys. Don't ever let anyone tell you it's not. It is a major surgery. And it's not something that should be taken lightly. So I talked to everybody in the room. And they were saying, well, you can wait. She said you can wait. But she did also say that she didn't want the baby to be stressed. The baby wasn't progressing. And they didn't. She said she'll wait a little bit longer. I took a while to make that decision as well, guys, because, like I said, I did not want a cesarean. 
if I didn't have to have one. So I waited and I waited and my boyfriend said, it's up to you. I support you either way. Everybody was saying, some people were like, um, but maybe you can wait a little bit longer. And some people were like, well, maybe you should just go ahead and get it, get it, get it done so you can have your baby. And ultimately I waited and my, nothing was happening and I decided to get a cesarean. So the C-section process is the anesthesia, they rush in so fast, y'all. And they talk so fast like hey they were on it like we're gonna do this we're gonna do that we're gonna go ahead and get you prepped we're gonna go ahead and do that they came in with clippers they shaved me they um rubbed some stuff on my stomach cleaned my stomach the anesthesiologist came in explained how the anesthesia worked for the cesarean how it was going to work uh, that they would have a sheet up and no one could be in there but me and my boyfriend as far as family um i would be away for the whole procedure i wouldn't feel anything Blah, 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 blah. They rushed me up out of there. After I said I wanted that cesarean, I was gone out of that room within probably 20 minutes. And I was in the um, in the operating room. This is when my anxiety ran high. Me and him were in there. I did not feel anything. Um, I had no feeling below my waist. And the sheet was right here. So you couldn't see. He was in back of that once he scrubbed in or got suited up. And they told me what they were going to do. And they said they were going to do some tests to make sure I was numb. I guess they were pinching me um, or sticking me with something. I didn't feel anything. So they went ahead and started. They started and all I felt was a bunch of pressure of them pushing the baby down. I didn't feel any pain. Um, I, of course, they have to move the baby down because the cesarean um, scar is very low. <sighs> I'm so emotional, guys, just thinking about it. I don't know why I am. It just... It really was an emotional day. Um, so I got the C-section. Um, they got her out. She was fine. I heard her cry. Everything was great. He, my boyfriend, got up, went over there and looked at the baby, took pictures or whatever. And they were still working on me, of course. Um, I hadn't seen the baby at that point. They were still cleaning her off. I just heard her cry and I just started, tears just started rolling down my face. In between that time, um, y'all, I don't really know what happened, but I went into full on panic mode. Like panic, anxiety. I don't know why. Um, I started to, to, my heart started beating real fast. I, I lost oxygen. The room started spinning. And everything started beeping, I guess, from my blood pressure or whatever. And I was, I said, I can't, I can't do this. And I, my boyfriend came back over and he had the baby. And he, I was just talking to her and I was, and I was like, baby, you're beautiful, blah, 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 blah. And I could not breathe. They had to put me back on the oxygen. And I said, I got to get out of here. I literally could not move my legs and I wanted to get off the table. They had your arms like out like this and they were taped down I guess so that you wouldn't reach down and do anything to touch anything down there while they were doing the surgery she said I'm gonna release your hand maybe you feel too confined I was like okay and that didn't work I started to freak I, I mean <sighs> just all over the place um full-on panic attack because I knew that I had legs y'all but I could not feel them and I think that that was the part that was bothering me the most I was having anxiety because I, I I didn't know what was going on down there. Um, I could not feel my legs. It was a thousand things going on. None of them good. Went into full on panic mode and he was trying to talk me through it. Like, just relax, baby. He was so scared. I was scared. I thought I was going to die right there on the table because that's how a panic attack feels. It feels like literally the room is this big and your oxygen is going down like this with each breath. And... It was frightening and they said we got to give her something so they gave me something I don't remember what my boyfriend said they stuck it in my IV bag and after that my eyes kind of rolled back he said my tongue kind of hung out and I was calm and he was scared to death I mean literally shaking um, and that's all I remember after that I woke up in the recovery room with me the baby one of the nurses and my boyfriend and I looked at her and I held her and I was fine after that. But the panic attack, just from the being, I was having the epidural so early before I actually had the baby. I didn't have her till late that night. I think just being numb and I better get out the bed. Guys, that's another thing. Once you get the epidural, you cannot move out the bed. You have to get on the bedpan. You have to use your total upper body strength to even be able to get on the bedpan. You, your legs are numb. 
they tingle. You could not walk if you wanted to. You would fall to the floor. So being in the bed that long up until delivery, I think actually it contributed to my anxiety. Um, so it was it was it was crazy. But she was fine, guys. She was small, like we had decided. I mean, that we had predicted because of whatever reason. We don't know if it was a placenta deficiency, my age mixed with my hypertension. We don't know. Um, but she was small and very, very, very healthy. She was four pounds and 14 ounces. Um, Miss Bailey is definitely an awesome fighter. I mean, to be so small and so mighty. She had no oxygen, um, no problems breathing, no jaundice. She passed everything with flying colors as she had done every week for her stress test. I mean, this baby is literally like, she's, she's a superstar. So um, she was tiny though and she wasn't considered premature because she wasn't prematurely born. She was just um, small for gestational age or something like that. Um, so she didn't have any issues. I was going to go ahead and breastfeed, but I decided that I would not want to do that. Um, the night that I got back in the room, I was not even making milk. I did try to latch her on, but when you have a C-section, your milk doesn't come in until a little bit later anyway. So they got her in the room with me and it was great. My boyfriend was there and this child is beautiful, guys. And I'm so in love. She has my whole heart. Um, I did spend three nights in the hospital. They would have wanted me to stay for, but I was ready to come home. Um, I didn't have any complications with my surgery except for the, one of the anesthesias or something used in the hospital broke me out into hives, which I actually still have. Keep in mind, this is only seven days ago. I still have hives all over my side all over my stomach, my thigh, and my arm. Um, and I had some on my back. I don't know if it was from the tape, from the tape that they use on my back. I don't know if the tape they put on my thigh for the Foley, for, I mean, sorry, for the um, catheter. I don't know, but the bumps are still all over my stomach and they're very, very, very itchy. I don't know where they come from. They just told me to take Benadryl, which I have not been doing because I'm up all night with a seven day old baby. Benadryl would make me comatose. Um, I try to, um, I'm off work, of course. I'm taking six to eight weeks, um, probably the eight. My boyfriend did go back to work, so I'm not going to take Benadryl and be so drowsy where I can't get up and care for her, and he has to work. He is, um, of course, here, but me being an unselfish person I am, I would prefer him get the rest because I know I can kind of nap throughout the day when she's here, which keep in mind, I do not do. So he went back to work on Monday. Today is actually... Um, is today Wednesday? Yeah, today is Wednesday. Um, so it was scary because you no, know, he went back to work Tuesday. Um, he was off Monday. So yesterday was his first day back to work. And I was scared to death to be by myself, but I did have some help. I had some people come over um and kind of be with me. Monday, postpartum hit, and um I'm gonna do that in another video. Um but as far as my symptoms, I very, very, very sore. Of course, again, guys, don't take it lightly. People do this all the time. But a cesarean is a major surgery. Don't be like me and try to roll up out of bed the day after surgery or the night of and take a shower, which I did, um, and be walking around. Give yourself time to heal. Allow people to help you. You don't have to be super mom right away, which I did, and I'm regretting it. Uh, my my C-section incision is very, very, very tender. I have been wearing the support belt, which does help. Um, but I have not been just laying around because, guys, I was so sad and depressed that actually moving around actually keeps me sane. Like yesterday, me and the baby left the house for the first time. I thought I wouldn't want to take her out, but I literally had to get out the house. And today is actually her first doctor's appointment, which we're going to go to here in a minute. Um, so there'll be many more videos to come about postpartum, what I'm doing to deal with it, because it definitely hit. It does not affect every woman the same. Um, some women, it does not affect at all. But guys, please, please understand that it is a real thing. Um, and it can really take you to a dark place. Um, and as happy as I am to have her, it's just, I can't explain the anxiety. I wake up every morning with anxiety. Of course, I have not had my follow-up with my doctor. I will speak to her about some of the stuff I'm feeling. But I'm doing better just to stay active, even though I'm exhausted, as you can see from these bags. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I'm just sore, trying not to overdo it. Um, and just preparing night to night, I prepare everything. I pre-prepare her bottles. I put the 
formula um, powder in her bottle so I can just pour the water in. Um, I sterilize every morning. I'm getting into a routine, but I still have a lot of anxiety about going back to work and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, like I said, there will be some follow-up videos. I did spend three days in the hospital. Um, really, that's it. Nothing else really happened. She passed all her tests in the hospital. She got her shot, her hepatitis shot. She passed her hearing screening. Um, she was a floor favorite. Everybody was so, so, so in love with her. Um, they, they People would come in. I heard that this is the cutest baby on the floor. I'm like, that's kind of biased, you know, because I'm a mom. I'm like, yes, but they did come in and say hey to her. Um, a couple of the nurses that had worked with her. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get Bailey because she is waking up anyway. Hopefully she's not screaming. And um, I look forward to talking to you guys on the next video about my postpartum body, um, what I'm doing to get myself back in shape, postpartum stress, um, eating after a cesarean. There will be many other videos after this one. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave them below. I know there's a ton of information on the internet about cesarean and a ton of videos guys but i'm fresh so fresh out seven days from a cesarean if you guys need me please don't hesitate to use me i'm going to go ahead and pause this video and grab bailey so she can do her youtube reveal and i'll be right back hello ladies i am back with baby bailey she is still sleeping so i don't want to wake her up y'all because to wake her up from a nap is a very 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 daunting thing Okay, so she's kind of pooched out here. I'm going to go ahead and get her in position. And she's doing her lips as she always does. But here is baby Bailey. As you guys can see, she is sleeping. And she is a tiny little bit. And she's pooching her lips out, guys. Because this is what she does. <laughs> when she sleep and I just love her so much guys I think she is a beautiful baby she's awesome and even though she's tiny I don't know if you can see that from the video she is quite 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 full of personality and spunk um, and she's very alert when she is up um, so this is Bailey of course um, in other videos I won't make her a YouTube star but she will make some um, some premieres on some videos and we'll we'll bring her back on maybe when she's woke and content but right now all she can think about is this nap that she's in so you guys i thank you guys so much for journeying with me i mean how can you not kiss this little face <laughs> but um i thank you guys so much for journaling um, journal, journal, going on this journey with me and for just you know your support and everyone that is in this position um, 35 and pregnant or just pregnant period and you have any questions please don't hesitate to call um i'm sorry to write um and i will be happy to answer any questions she is like a limp noodle guys it is extremely hard to hold her when she's like this so i'm gonna shoulder her really quick um there we go and i thank you guys again for watching and i'm gonna go ahead and tend to her so we can get out this door for our appointment and i will talk to you guys soon Bye.